Hello everyone, I'm Dennis and I built my own CPU. Unfortunately, just in a simulator, but at least it works in a simulator, which makes me really happy. Unfortunately, I would like it to work on my table, not just on a simulator. So I would like to build it in the real hardware and run some software on my real hardware and see how it goes. As my design is complete, it's already a time to start working on that hardware. What I plan to do is to implement each of those CPU models. I have seven of them at a separate PCB. Well, some of the models will share the PCB because they're pretty small, like a memory interface. But the general idea is that each model will be a single PCB. And I would like to connect those PCB using a backplane connectors. So I'm going to have a separate backplane board with a set of connectors, exactly same connectors. And this board will handle all the connections between the models. All the connections you see on the screen right now will be on this board with some small exceptions. But the general idea is that to have all of those connections and that backplane board will be technically passive. So there will be no logic, but I think I will put some kind of uh, debugging LEDs and uh, I plan to put a power supply here. And this board will provide the power, this board will provide the connections and how it will it connect to the model PCBs. I'm going to use that kind of Amphenol uh, backplane connectors. They are standard connectors. I think they are known as 41612 or something like that. I don't remember already, but I, I think, yeah, it's 41612. So those are 96 pin connectors, three rows, 32 pins each. And those connectors will pass everything for me. So ground, power, um, all the signals, so on and so forth. I will have several of them on the backplane and each connector on the PCB model of a single like ALU stack or whatever I have. Those models will be a half Eurocard standard, so pretty small. And I plan them to be, I would call it vertically, but the models itself, they will be horizontal, but they will be moved like from top to bottom and so on and so forth. So it will be a tower of models. I have a plan and I need to start implementing this plan. But before I go to implement it, what kind of integrated circuits am I going to use? I already made my choice as I'm building my CPU on 74 series of a standard logic ICs. I made a pre-selection of the circuits like XOR gates, OR gates, all kind of gates, uh, plus multiplexers, plus buffers, plus transceivers, plus uh, more multiplexers and so on and so forth. I started to build the design of my CPU with an ALU model. And so I would like my first model to be an ALU. The ALU consists of roughly like three big parts. The control logic, decoder plus couple of four gates, add sub unit, left shift, right shift unit. So they're separate plus uh, simple logic gates. And outputs of all of those gates are buffered and I'm using the open drain buffer. So it's safe to connect them to the same bus. It is really safe to connect them to the same bus and to connect them to the same like wires and outputs. So the shift unit is pretty simple. That's actually just a multiplexer with input connected with the bits shifted to the left or to the right. While the adder is a little bit more complicated, I'm using the ripple carry adder, uh, which consists of eight one bit adders. And each of those adders uh, is made from two XOR gates, two AND gates and one OR gate. As I'm going to use quad circuits and quad circuit means that in one uh, package I will have four gates like four XOR gates, four AND gates and so on and so forth. I will need half of a XOR package, half of OR package, or half of XOR package, half of AND package and one quarter of OR package. Which means my kind of minimum unit will be four bits adder because otherwise I will have a half of a circuit. So let me transfer the logical design into the physical design. And for the physical design, for example, for the XOR gates, I told you I have a XOR gate, so they are represented at a separate XOR units plus additional power unit. So copying just XORs, ANDs, ORs, and so on and so forth, and repeating the design. 
the only difference to the design and now I'm working on the real circuit I need to think of things like say decoupling capacitors and power circuits uh, for example as I'm going to have five units per single four bit adder I need four, five decoupling capacitors one for each unit uh, pl plus I need to connect the power rails uh, for all of those ICs to the respective plate, plus 5 and ground. And that's all. So I make a bus and I connect all of those adders one by one to the bus. Their carry outputs are sent back to the carry inputs because that's still part of my carry ripple adder. So this is pretty simple. You just copy the logical design into physical design and think like, okay, yeah, I have power, I have to care about the power and I have to care about the decoupling, not too much. As for the 8-bit adder, it will be exactly the same as my 8-bit adder in the logical design, but now it will be built not from 8 1-bit adders, but from 2 4-bit adders. So the only difference will be that I need to accept, kind of get from external connection an 8-bit bus of my operands and split it into two 4-bit buses connected to my 4-bit adders and their carry out and carry ins are days chained. The carry out of the last adder, like the carry out of the 4-bit adder is unused and everything else is sent externally like result is combined to the bus and sent to the external port I'm, con I'm creating those adders at a separate sub modules because I would like to reuse them I will need an adder for the uh, fetch model I will need an add sub model for the register file so I would like to be able to reuse the design that's why I'm separating it yeah the next step for the adder, we'll be extending the adder to the add sub model. So the add sub model consists of an adder plus two complement circuit made from eight XOR gates, plus their power units, plus their uh, decoupling capacitor and control signal that switches from between the addition and subtraction. I need to disassemble the operand bus and connect it to the XOR gates, implementing the two complements and then assemble the results back and send it to the adder. So that's pretty simple, just a lot of bus operations, connect, uh, splitting the bus and then combining the signals back to the bus. Plus, of course, the output signal. Uh, the rest of the ALU is a little bit more interesting. The ALU accepts signals like X out, Y out, X and emits signals X in plus ALU control signals. The X out signal comes directly from the X register and why I don't need it in the logical design, I would like to put it in a physical design, I'm going to buffer it. So I'm going to put a buffer that will uh, decrease the fan out load on the output buffer of the X register. And yeah, I'm connecting my buffer to my uh, backplane connector. For the Y out, the Y out is not really widely spread everywhere because for the X out it's used everywhere but Y out is used in a couple of models I don't need the buffer here the fan out load will be not that bad so yeah buffer combining the buses like splitting the buses and combining the output of buffer back to the bus and now I can connect it to my adder uh, what I should do next I also have a lot of logical operations like SOAR operations and operations so on and so forth. They are pretty simple, so you just take enough mm, gates, like if you have XOR operation you need to take 8 XOR gates, which means 2 packages. Don't forget about the power and the decoupling capacitors. Uh, extract the signals from the bus, connect them to your XOR gates, and then I need to connect the outputs of my XOR gates to a buffer, but this time I have a controllable buffer. And this buffer is a open drain buffer, so it allows me to connect several buffers to the same line, to the same bus, same physical wires safely. Uh, there will be more connections on my backplane 
uh, connectors, but I don't need the B and C part. And those parts are, as you remember, I told you, I have three rows of 32 pins. So each row is considered to be a part like A, B and C. ALU uses just an A part, but B and C provide additional ground and power connections. So I would also like it to be connected on this PCB. That's the only reason I need to uh, provide the connections for the B and C part for the ALU, not for the rest. And having those connections, I can continue with the logical operations. The uh, rest of the logical operations, AND and OR, they are exactly the same as XOR. So you put your gates, you put your power units, you put your capacitors, the coupling capacitors, you put the buffer and so on and so forth. Rinse and repeat all the time. I'm going to even skip it because it's really, really boring. You just have to make 24 connections for each operation and then make 24 bus labels and then repeat it one more time and one more time and one more time. Uh, the only different thing here is the not operation because the not operation is an unary operation. For rest of the operations you need to get values from the X out bus and Y out bus. But for the not operation, for the negation inversion, uh, you only need to take wires from the X out bus. Plus, I'm using six unit inverters for the not operation, uh, which means it wouldn't be four and four, it will be like six plus two. So I have four unused uh, inverters. Well, unfortunately, I have to leave them unused. I don't need them on this model anymore. Um, the coupling capacitors, buffer, everything else, the only difference is I only connected to the X out. And finally, I have shifts. And as I told you, shift is just a multiplexer. Uh, which inputs are connected with some shift either to the left or to the right. I'm using a four bit multiplexers. Well, technically that's the four two bit multiplexers, but uh, they act exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you have four two bit multiplexers or one four bit multiplexer. I need to connect them to the X bus cause that's also on operation. And I need to connect both like left and right input to the X bus. But as I told you, I'm going to do it with a shift. And the trick here is to connect it properly and to not to make a mistake as I did. So I have to reconnect everything, remove the connections and connect them one more time. Output of those multiplexers go where, goes where? Of course, it goes to the output buffer with open drain connector. And having this, uh, I have implemented all the operations, so now I can start forming the X in bus, which is the output bus of the ALU and input bus for the X register, that's why it's X in. I just need to draw a bus and connect uh, one side of the bus to the backplane connector. And another one side of the bus is getting connected to all of those buffers, all of those output buffers which means again, just a lot of copy pasting and labeling the wires. I'm again going to skip all of this cause it's just exactly the same. You copy the wire and copy the eight, a label eight times for each buffer. Uh, having those buffers, I can start working on the control logic and my control logic consists of a decoder and the outputs of the decoder enables one particular buffer. So it will get connected to the bus. Plus I have two OR gates because some of my operations, for example, left shift and right shift. Uh, I need to enable the output buffer for a left shift and right shift in all cases. But the actual left shift and right or right shift picks up the proper side multiplexer. Same for the add sub. So I'm choosing the additional subtraction, but I need to enable the output buffer of add sub model all the time. The trickiest part here is to make the proper connection and not to invert the pins. So I put the decoder, 3 to 8 decoder, I put the four gates and my ALU op is actually four bits, but the four bits, like the leftmost bit is controlling the decoder output. So when it's high, the all the decoder output go to the low effectively disabling the whole unit. And then I need to connect the outputs of my decoder to the control pins of my buffers. Unfortunately, at this moment, I realized that I forgot a buffer on the add sub model. 
and I don't have this buffer inside of this model because I would like to reuse uh, the add sub model in other parts of the circuit and those other parts of the circuit they don't need at all they don't need at all this buffer so it needs to be part of the ALU so I have to put it here and reconnect the add sub model to my buffer like again splitting the bus and connecting the bus and this ends up the electrical design of my ALU circuit Unfortunately, I didn't have the time on the stream to start working on the PCB, like to build the PCB, but I just started working on it. So my PCB will be, as I mentioned, half Euro card standard, 100 millimeters to 80 millimeters. And I'm going to use unusual stack up here. My outer layers will be ground layers and power and signals will be the inner layers. So signal and power will share the layers. Uh, that's why I'm creating all of those copper polygons on all four layers. But the internal layers will share those power polygons with the signal lines, like signal traces. I probably will make most of the tracing offline, uh, but uh, I think at least I will either go through the PCB on the next stream or maybe I will dedicate the stream for tracing the PCB, but I know that's really time consuming, so probably I will do it offline. So, next time we'll see the PCB, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.